Why are you crying? They're closing. Forever. Doesn't that make you sad? Well, sure it does, but that doesn't mean that it... I'm just beside myself with this news. No thanks, I'm good. to go into on um, one of my last stops at Skips, Records, and CD World, so let's see what they've got left. Well, it's, uh, I'm here early, so it is not very busy. Uh, yeah, you can't see a whole lot of customers out there in the store. I'm kind of in the back corner where the uh, country and uh, folk and Christian music are, as well as the bargain CD wall right here behind me. Um, things are looking a little picked over, uh, you know. I mean, it's, it's, this is the third week, I think, of the uh, going out of business sale. Stuff is at 25% off, I believe. Uh, my, my memory's not the best this morning. I had a rough night's sleep last night, but uh, yeah, despite slight lack of sleep, I could not uh, pass up one of my last opportunities coming here, obviously. Uh, I've found a few things, uh, and I will definitely show them to you in uh, at home in a wrap-up video. One of the wrap-up videos may not be the last one, so... But yeah, the uh, I don't know if you can see it in this video, but the new releases wall has been dismantled. Uh, yeah, it's just looking really bare over there, and I, I might show you in a minute here, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it's starting to look real. Yeah, the store is slowly being uh, taken apart bit by bit, so uh, a little rough to deal with, but, hey, you know, part of life has changed, so, you know, I, I, I could go on rambling here, but, yeah, for now, let's just say I'm going to keep on browsing for a while, and I'll, as I said, I'll show you what I got uh, later on. Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, this is... The video that I pretty much knew I was going to have to make within the next 10 years at some point, and probably within the next five, but uh, I didn't think it was going to happen this soon, uh, this soon after the interview that I just did, uh, really. But yes, uh, Skip Hermans has decided to retire and liquidate the store, and Skip's Records and CD World is going to be going out of business within the next month, approximately. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I am, am appropriately attired for the occasion of this video, yes. I had to get one more Skip shirt uh, at the store before they closed. Uh, yes, Skip posted the unfortunate news on the evening of July 3rd, uh, right before Independence Day here in the States, and I know better than to check my Facebook feed right before I go to bed, but I did anyway, and that's when I found it out, and so it took me an extra hour, hour and a half to get to sleep that night. Uh, but when I woke up in the, ne the next morning, I, you know, had started getting over the initial shock of it. Uh, and it, it was a tough decision for Skip. As you saw in my interview video, uh, he was kind of dreading the day he was going to have to tell his employees that they were going to have to look for new jobs because him, his employees mean the world to him, as he mentioned. And uh, that was probably the toughest decision, uh, the toughest part of his decision to uh, shut down and retire. And he had told me before at some point that he just didn't feel right uh, selling the store off or passing it on to anyone else and, you know, having the store continue without him being in charge of it. So that's the the reasoning behind why he's just closing the store and not uh, selling it off or passing it on. At least as far as I know. I, I heard a little bit of rumor chatter that uh, he was reconsidering, but I guess we'll find out in the, in the next few months if uh, another uh, version of the store uh, stays put in the same spot. But uh, anyway, uh, and he assured me uh, after he made the announcement when he, he and I talked that uh, the interview did not have anything to do with his, his decision. He had not made up his mind before the interview. Uh, what was the last straw apparently was uh, something, and I will probably post a uh, link to the article here in the comments section below in this video, is uh, something that happened with a change in major label distrib distribution for uh, records and CDs. 
that caused uh, not just his store, but pretty much all independent stores across the country to start receiving their new releases late, and in some instances, not at all, and screwed up invoices, and they didn't get as much as they ordered, or they didn't get, they got more than they ordered, or, you know, any number of problems has, have been plaguing the music industry for a long time. So, if you are a shopper at an independent store, and they don't have the new releases in time uh, on the release date, it's not their fault. Uh, they're doing the best they can. This is a nationwide screw up. And I, I think I've actually heard uh, about uh, store owners in Canada that are having the same problem. So now one thing that uh, factored into his decision to shut down the store and retire is something that I actually wasn't aware of until he mentioned it in the announcement on Facebook, is that the store had actually been losing money recently, which, uh, yeah, as I said, was news to me. I mean, every time I went in there, there seemed to be a decent number of people you know, browsing the aisles, and of course, not all browsers are shoppers. So, uh, but if he was losing money, it certainly wasn't because of me. Uh, I mean, I, I, I did. I like to think that I did my part, probably more than my part. Um, and I, I am not rich by any means, not not by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I don't spend nearly enough money on on music as I would love to, as I've said before. But I am one of those people who's lucky enough to be in a position where I have a little bit of extra spending money every month after paying bills and whatnot, uh, money to play with. So fortunately it's enough to uh, pretty much support my music habit, my music addiction. Uh, but yeah, it, my CD collection number is approximately 2,500 and I kind of sat down and did the math. I decided I had to do this in my head to figure, just to, for my own curiosity, if I figured that 40% of them came from skips, which is might be a slightly high estimate, it might be a slightly low estimate, who knows, but if we figure 40%, that's 1,000 of my CDs. And that works out to, since I've been shopping there for 24 years, yes, 24 years, that works out to an average of about 42 CDs per year, or three and a half CDs per month. And, and of course, there's a big margin for error for that, uh, because I've, I am constantly uh, selling or trading in CDs uh, out of my collection that I don't care for anymore. And so a lot of those that I have sold or traded in came from skips. So, but if you figure, you know, an average of four CDs per month, I mean, you know, not a lot of us are able to buy four CDs per month. So, I, you know, as I said, I consider myself very lucky there in, in that department. And now that is actually not counting the grab bags, the uh, mystery CD grab bags that I get from Skips, uh, which have seven discs in them. So, I mean, that's several of the CDs, probably a couple dozen in my collection came from those grab bags. So those cost me almost nothing. So figure that into the equation. Uh, oh, and by the way, if you are worried about my bargain bag segment, because yes, the CD grab bags come from Skips Records and CD World, well, have no fear because, well, this is what I did. Yes, I'm probably kind of crazy. Yeah, I decided as soon as uh, he made the announcement that he was going to close up, I decided, okay, I want to keep this bargain bag thing going as long as I can. I love doing it. So I bought a whole bunch of grab bags. I have enough to carry the bargain bag segment through the end of December 2020. And probably a little bit further than that. I, I may go, you know, as the discounts go up at skips, I may go and buy another dozen to, to keep it going for another year. So have no fear. The bargain bag segment will be alive and well. Uh, uh, far beyond when Skip closes his doors. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, that uh, average of CDs that I bought at Skip's uh, actually is including the free CDs that I've gotten over the years. Now, uh, in my wallet, I have always kept a uh, bonus card. He had a bonus card program where uh, you get stamps for each, uh, a full stamp for uh, regular priced items, CDs or, or LPs, and a half stamp for sale price items. And when you, the card fills up with stamps, you get a free item up to $17.95, I think it is. Uh, so yeah, I've filled out probably a dozen of these, at least 10 over the course of the last two, almost two and a half decades I've been a shopper there. So, uh, and yes, you're gonna think this is really silly or stupid or weird, but he is no longer honoring the bonus cards or giving stamps for items, of course, since they're going out of business. But I decided uh, just as the sale started, I was able to redeem my last full stamp card so, but I hate the empty space in my wallet right there. So I asked the guy for another stamp card. It's blank, it's never gonna have any stamps in it, but it's always going to be, it, it's okay, it's probably a pacifier. I guess you could say it's a pacifier for me. But yeah, it'll leave me a little bit of comfort, emotional comfort that uh, skips will always be in my life because I'll always have the uh, bonus card there in my wallet. So, 
But anyway, in, in going over these numbers and crunching these numbers and whatnot and telling them to you, I'm not trying to necessarily quantify my loyalty to the store or anything, you know, win any contests or anything. I'm just trying to explain how big a part of my life Skips was over the years. And uh, yet, yeah, the news of his closure, it hit me harder than I probably expected, and it took me a while to figure out why. And uh, there are basically three reasons, really. Uh, first of all, I've been going there for literally half my life. I'm 48 years old. I've been going there for 24 years. So, you know, I mean, when, you, when you've been going to a place for that long and you've always counted on it being there and I suppose at some points, but this is, might have been rare, I may have taken it for granted. Uh, but, you know, you, you, you do kind of take it for granted. If you've been going there for so long, you kind of assume that's always going to be there. So, uh, but yeah, now that I know it's not going to be there anymore, uh, at, in, you know, in about a month it's going to be gone. It's just going to be weird uh, going by that storefront and not having skips in there. Uh, it's just, you know, for the entire time I've lived in this area, as I said, I've, you know, it, it's always been there. It's been a fixture in my life and in the community. And uh, another reason why uh, it's hit me hard here is when my sister was alive and with us, uh, and she would come up t from California for her uh, two, sometimes three times a year visit. She'd come up for about a week, sometimes two or three weeks. And uh, during each of her visits, she and I would take uh, a day and go shopping, just have fun, do whatnot. And uh, one of our routines was we'd go to Skip's in the morning, then we'd go to lunch, which was usually at Red Robin, because I love Red Robin, uh, their burgers for lunch. And then after that, uh, there was a Barnes & Noble, just, you know, catty corner across the street from the Red Robin, so we'd go there and maybe do a couple other things uh, during that day. So. Skips is a, a connection to my sister, and so, you know, every time one of the connections with my sister goes away, it's, you know, it tugs at the old heartstrings. I mean, you know, how could it not? Uh, so, but yeah, that's, that's just one of those things that, uh, I mean, it's not like my memories of my sister can be extracted. You know, I, I realize that, uh, you know, my memories of my sister are alive and well and will be until the day I die. But yeah, it's just, you know, having that physical connection, I guess you'd say, with something that my sister and I shared together is, is you know, something it's, it's, it's a little hard to deal with. So uh, yeah, that's another, uh, another downside <laughs> of the many downsides to, uh, to Skip's closing. And the other reason, and this one actually did not occur to me until very, very recently in the psychological processing of uh, Skip's closure, is that uh, Skip's Records and CD World is the first indie record store that I've regularly shopped at. Uh, yes, until then I sheepishly admit that I was very much of a chain store kind of guy. Uh, yes, there were some stores in the malls, I'm sure you probably know, are familiar with some of them anyway. Uh, Musicland, which eventually morphed into Sam Goody and is now uh, in a handful of the locations that are left, uh, is called FYE. And then there was another chain called Camelot Music uh, that was also here in the area. I don't know if any of you had Camelot Music at where you were. And then, of course, Tower Records. I absolutely loved going into Tower, and I part of me still misses Tower. I went to the Tower in Portland until, like, what, a month before they closed up. And, of course, when I was growing up down in Southern California, there was a chain called Music Plus. And that's probably where the chain store mentality got ingrained in me is because I went to Music Plus and they were a chain store. They were just a regional chain, but still they were a chain. And uh, Warehouse, uh, there was another one that was in the area. So yeah, uh, there's I, the nearest I can figure as to why I'm into, or at least was into the chain store thing, was probably because there's something in my mind, something in my psyche that has comfort in conformity and uniformity and sameness. And of course, when you walk into a chain store, they all look the same on the inside, basically. So, uh, but yeah, thankfully, Skips eventually entered my life and completely changed my mind, my mentality for indie stores. It showed me the beauty of each store's individual atmosphere and uh, look and feel. And, you know, it's just, I consider Skips Records and CD World coming into my life, as well as House of Records. Uh, one of the happiest accidents I've ever experienced. So, uh, now, before I go any further, I just want to say that if it sounds like I'm trying to send Skip or anyone associated with him on any kind of a guilt trip, I'm not. I, this this video is just to put out my thoughts about Skips and just to say how much I'm going to miss it. I mean, honestly, if anyone has earned a well-deserved retirement, I mean, after 
40 plus years in music retail, it's Skip. I mean, honestly, uh, I wish him nothing but the best. He has totally earned this and deserved this. Uh, he wants to spend time with his grandkids. He's, he's got five grandkids now and he wants to be a grandpa. And how can I refuse anybody of that? I mean, honestly, there's, that's something that no money in the world can buy, honestly. And also, I, I read in one article that uh, he needs some sur surgery on his knees, and uh, he's been putting that off and putting that off because it takes, what, six, six eight weeks to uh, recover from such a thing. And of course, you know, when he's running the business, he can't take six weeks off. So, uh, and, and also he, he wants to write a uh, that book. I think I, he mentioned the book in the interview about his uh, experiences in the music retail industry. And I am waiting on pins and needles to read that book. So. Thank goodness this will give him time, especially his uh, knee surgery recovery will give him time to write that book. Write that book, Skip. I'm counting on you. Now the, the shock and sadness part of Skip's closure is pretty much behind me. I'm pretty much over that now. So I'm trying to focus on the positives, uh, you know, the positive memories, positive thoughts. Uh, first of all, the fact that uh, I'm lucky to have had as many years with that store as I did. Uh, at least once before, they came very, very close to closing down. Uh, most notably and most recently was about three or four years ago the city built a rapid transit bus line uh, through the through town on a couple of different routes and one of the routes goes out to the west end of town where Skips is located and one of the stations one of the stops for that line is actually right in front of Skips uh, you know convenient as, as it was for these last few years it almost killed the business because they had to block off the main entrance to his parking lot to build this station I mean there was the back uh, entrance to the parking lot that was still accessible, but it was harder to find. So yeah, I mean, that, that almost killed his business right there. He almost had to go out of business there. So we've gotten at least three years more out of skips than we probably should have gotten uh, by all rights. And another reason, another thing is we are extraordinarily lucky uh, here in the Eugene Springfield area to still have one more really, really great record store to go to, at least one. And we've still got House of Records. They're a fantastic store, and uh, I feel especially blessed. Uh, I know that I'm very, very well aware of the fact that many friend, many people, including a couple of friends, uh, they have to drive at least an hour, more than an hour, to get to any record store at all. And it could be a crappy record store for all I know. And you know, and we have, as I said, one really, really great record store. Not only is it in a very short driving distance, it's in walking distance from my work. So hey, I have got it really, really good. Uh, I don't know how good my wallet has it, but uh, that's another story. So, but yeah, uh, very, very lucky guy here. Part of my luck is that I have great, great memories. I've found so many great uh, records and CDs at the store. Well, pretty much all CDs. I've only got a couple records there over the years. Which, uh, and I'll show you some of my good finds in just a minute here. But uh, yeah, I have nothing but good memories of that store. Uh, the only thing that saddens me is that my friends, uh, one of my friends was... That was one of the things that he really, really was hoping to do. When he, by the time he made it out here, he's not going to be able to make it out here for a couple of years unless something extraordinary happens. And one of his goals was to go inside inside Skips and see Skips for himself. And unfortunately, that's not going to happen for him. And uh, I feel nothing but sadness for him for that uh, because yeah, it's it's an experience going into that store. But yeah, and and not only do we have uh, at least one more good store here in Eugene, but Portland is just crammed with great record stores. Music Millennium, I've mentioned that before. If you go to Portland, you've got to go into Music Millennium. It's got atmosphere out the back end, uh, and it's just a fantastic, fantastic store. A huge amount of, of uh, inventory there. So, so yeah, here in the Northwest, we are very, very spoiled for great record stores, and uh, I cannot be more grateful than I am for that. Now, one of the things that it really makes me laugh whenever I think about it, is that uh, in the newspaper articles and the TV news stories that have come out since news broke of Skip's closure, is that Skip has said repeatedly how it took him totally by surprise. He was completely caught off guard by the huge outpouring of love and support and positive comments and messages about the store. But honestly, I could have told him that was going to happen. Uh, because, uh, and I think the reason for that is uh, the reason that the community skips mean so much to the community is music is the one art form that uh, and <clears throat> I've heard a few people say this uh, Sinead O'Connor most notably uh, the one that comes to mind first is that music is the one art form that doesn't really have to be processed by the brain to go you know to affect you it goes straight to your soul was uh, how she put it and she was right I mean you know music just touches a part of the soul that 
uh, you know, nothing else does. And it, I mean, there have been studies on it and science is coming out about how, you know, it, it helps people with uh, stammers or stutters. You know, they listen to music or they sing and the stutter goes away. So, you know, that right there tells you all you need to know about how how music affects you on a completely different level than a book or a sculpture or a painting does. So yeah, music is a very unique art form in that respect, and it's a very deep and soul-touching thing. And the other reason why Skips meant so much to the community is because of the way he treated his customers, uh, I think, anyway. I mean, you know, whenever, as soon as you walk in the door, he or one of his staff would greet you. And another little theory I have here is that uh, when the employees mean a lot to the boss, then the boss is going to mean a lot to the employees. And I think that showed in the way that, uh, you know, because the staff at the store treated you just as warmly and as welcomingly as Skip did, the owner. So, and that came across, and when that comes across, and, you know, that just radiates out to the customers, and you feel welcome. And that was a thing that I think I'm going to miss most about Skip's, is that whenever you walked in the store, he and or his staff made you feel welcome. And uh, so you wanted to shop there, and, and I did. I wanted to shop there, <laughs> and I want to keep shopping there, but that's not going to happen. Uh, but yet again, I'm not trying to send Skip on a guilt trip. I He deserves his retirement 100, 110% as far as I'm concerned. But uh, so yeah, I just want to take this opportunity. Thank you, Skip, for 24 years of amazing deals, a, a wonderful store to walk into, a very welcoming and atmospheric store. Uh, you were never short on content. Uh, um, uh, inventory stuff to buy, unique sounds to listen to, uh, great deals, cool finds over the years. I've got a few good finds to show you right here and coming up. And yeah, you always made me feel welcome. And uh, the staff was always willing to help me find something, even though I almost never needed their help because I knew the store like, a like the back of my hand. I probably should have been working there. But uh, anyway, and uh, yet the fact that he and his staff made you feel so welcome is something that you do not see in a lot of small businesses name anymore you know, is that the owner and the employees even taking a measure of pride in the business and uh, yeah and I think as I said I think the way that Skip treated his employees uh, it, um, showed in that it, it kind of came through to the customers and that was a, a very big part of uh, what made Skip's what it is and uh, one thing that uh, very greatly sums up what I'm thinking more than I possibly could is something that a local journalist wrote in a, uh, a regional uh, paper, a local paper. He said, it's hard to imagine anything filling Skip's space that would mean so much to so many people. And that is, that's my feeling 100%. I, it's, as I said, it's going to be very, very weird to go past that storefront and to not have Skip's inside of it. Uh, it's going to take a lot of getting used to, a lot of getting used to, and uh, I don't know how many months or years it's going to take, but uh, you know, life goes on. Uh, change is one of the big parts of life. Uh, I've learned that by now. I've learned that a long time ago. And so, yeah, maybe another fantastic store, even more wonderful than Skip's. Though that's almost impossible, I know. Almost completely impossible. But, hey, something maybe something as good as Skip's, let's put it that way, will uh, pop up somewhere else in the community. Um, hopefully that'll happen. But anyway, enough rambling and reminiscing. I'm going to show you, as I promised you, some of the uh, memorable finds that I found at Skips over the years. <laughs> finds that I found. <laughs> I talk good American. Anyway, uh, first one is here is a four disc set, uh, Back to the 80s, The Long Versions 2. Yes, this is uh, the second volume in a series. And I got this, oh, what, 15 years ago, possibly 20 years ago. It is a, I can't remember if I mentioned this, it's a Dutch import. Uh, and in those 15 years, off and on, I have been looking for volume one. And I finally found it um, for a reasonable price. I'd found it a couple of times, but it was for a ridiculous price. So I figured it was very, very rare and I was never going to find it. But uh, I found it on Discogs online store. I've never shopped at Discogs before, but I found it for like 20 bucks. So uh, yeah, found it. It's on its way to me now. I don't have it yet, but uh, yeah. Finally, after 15 years of sitting by itself, it's, it's uh, Brother Volume 1 will soon be joining it on my shelf here. So uh, I knew there was a reason I kept it all these years, besides being an 80s kid and, you know, hey, extended remixes of 80s songs even better than the originals. Some of them. Uh, and then this one is a two-disc compilation from Norway by an artist named Sissel. And now you have probably heard Sissel. You 
probably haven't heard of her, but uh, in the movie Titanic, the voice other than Celine Dion's, I mean, Celine Dion did the song uh, My, Heart Will, My Heart Will Go On, uh, Sissel is the other voice that you hear in the other um, James Horner instrumental tracks, you know, that are that have a female voice on them. That's Sissel's voice. And so, yeah, that's probably her biggest claim to fame. Uh, I am familiar with her from a collaboration she did, a duet that she did with another favorite Norwegian artist of mine, who I will be doing, honestly, I, I've been promising more discography videos. Uh, I told you I was going to do more this year than I did last year. The year's already half over and I haven't done any, but honestly, I, pr I promise at least one will be coming to you this year. And anyway, that is the artist, the one that I just mentioned, the Norwegian artist, is who I'm going to do this next uh, discography on. It's not Sissel, it's this other guy. But, uh, yeah. And then the next one, this is actually the most recent find. Uh, I was at a grocery store, uh, this was about two months ago, and I heard this really cool song that I liked on the music in, in the grocery store inside it. So I took out my phone and Shazam the song, and it turned out to be on this CD. Uh, it's a guy named Tor Miller, and the album is called American English, and I really liked the song. Uh, decided, checked out the next day, I looked on Skip's online store, and believe it or not, against all odds, he had a used copy of the CD in stock for six bucks. And and this is on uh, an indie label. This is Glass Note. It's, it's a fairly well-known indie label, but it's still an indie label, an obscure artist. But somehow, against all odds, he actually had the CD in stock. So I ran over and uh, picked it up. So yeah, it was it was fate. It was meant to be. I was meant to be in the grocery store at that moment to hear that song. And yeah, the rest was history, I guess you'd say. And uh, so yeah, now on to... Uh, I thought I would show you some of the most recent finds I've uh, picked up on during Skip's going out of business sale. Uh, the discount right now is 25%. Uh, so yeah, most of these, yeah, well about half of these I got for 15% and the rest of them I got for 25%. I miss I missed the 20% off week, what can I say? This one I just got yesterday. <laughs> it's, yes, a, uh, the, I can't, I don't, I'm not sure if this is the Korean or Taiwan edition of NSYNC's debut album. And I was just going to get this for, for novelty purposes. I know it has a bonus track on it, but I could have sworn that the bonus track was one that I already had. And it turns out, after I got home yesterday and looked at all my other NSYNC CDs, and I have a fairly pretty uh, extensive NSYNC collection, I did not have that song on any of those releases. So, you know, extra value. You know, I was going to get it, as I said, just for the novelty of it, but hey, an extra song too. And then uh, this one, The Laws were in uh, a 90s, 1990, I think. Uh, they were kind of a one-hit wonder. They only put out one album. And uh, so, yeah, I got the... A deluxe version. It has the original album and then the Mike Hedges mix, uh, remix version. Uh, it's a long story about this one album. Uh, it's interesting to read, though. Go online and read it. Uh, yeah, I guess the, the front man for The Laws was an intense perfectionist, and that's part of the reason why he never put out another album, or the band never put out another album. But anyway, yeah, I picked that one up. Uh, it was eleven ninety five before discount, so that was pretty good. And then uh, David Guetta, Nothing But The Beat. Uh, I probably wouldn't have gotten this uh, CD because most of the guest uh, artists' features on here are hip-hop artists, which, you know, hip-hop is not my thing. But uh, this actually is the bonus disc edition. So, uh, yeah, two CDs. I figured I'd go ahead and grab it. Uh, six ninety-five be before discount, so why not? I do have his Listen album uh, in my collection, and, and I like that one. So, hey, give another David Guetta album a try. Why not? And then the, the uh, deluxe edition of Sam Smith's The Thrill of It All. I had the basic edition, but uh, yeah, and this was actually still there a week into the sale, which kind of surprised me. I thought it was one of the going to be one of the first things to get scooped up, but uh, no, it was still there, six ninety five before discount. So, uh. and then this one, uh, Michael Franti and Spearhead, uh, his album All People. Now there's a separate story behind why I picked this one up. When uh, another record store that I really liked in town closed up. This was in 2005, I think was when they closed up. It was called Face the Music. It was uh, very, very close to where I worked. Uh, one, of the, one of the songs that was playing the last time I walked into the store, this was like the, you know, the last couple of days of when they were open, was a song called Everyone Deserves Music by Michael Franti and Spearhead. And it's kind of like the title of the song really was, it kind of fit for the occasion. So it's like, I was meant to have the CD, or I was meant to hear that song. So I bought this album from them. This was one of my last purchases from them at Face the Music. So I decided to, in a way, keep that tradition alive, I guess you'd say, by buying a Michael Franti album during one of my last visits to Skips. So, uh, 
And there's also another reason behind this one. Kenny Loggins, More Songs from Pooh Corner. Yes, this is a an album geared toward uh, children or, or the parents of young children. But the reason I picked this one up is because the pre predecessor album, um, Return to Pooh Corner, by Kenny, also by Kenny Loggins, was in my sister's collection. And I thought seriously about giving it up, but for some reason I, there was a reason why I didn't, and this was obviously the reason. I mean, and this kind of furthers the, you know, the connection of skips, you know, as something that my, my sister and I shared. You know, this was her CD, this is a CD that I bought, and, you know, so, and it's a CD that I bought at skips. So that's uh, kind of helps to solidify that connection, a, a tangible uh, remembrance of that connection to my sister. So I couldn't not get that CD. So. And then I also took the opportunity to uh, fill a couple of gaps in my Kenny Chesney collection. Yes, I'm becoming a Kenny Chesney fan. What can I say? I picked up a couple of uh, CDs for free out of that uh, Freebie Finds. I think I mentioned them in my Freebie Finds video a, couple, a month or so ago at From House of Records. So that has caused me to go down the Kenny Chesney rabbit hole. And another rabbit hole I've gone down is the Kebmo rabbit hole, as I mentioned in my Kebmo video. So I had to fill a couple of uh, gaps in that collection. And uh, speaking of filling gaps, uh, Weezer's Black Album. Yes, I know it's one of their less liked albums, but uh, Brian at True North Reviews thought highly of this album, and I respect his opinion, so I had to get it, honestly. And I haven't heard a bad Weezer album yet. I actually haven't listened to this one yet, but uh, I've come to the point where now where I think that uh, a Weezer album is kind of like pizza. Even when it's not all that great, it's still pretty good. So. Uh, and we'll see if that continues with listening to the Black Album. And then uh, Cheryl Crow, I got one of the CDs that I did not have of hers. Uh, and, and again, uh, this is kind of a connection with my sister. She was, she's responsible for most of the Cheryl Crow CDs that I have in my collection. So, uh, and then this one, I actually did not know this existed until I was strolling past the uh, the techno section in Skips and saw this. It's a group called the Knox. And this is an album called 55. And I saw the, the hype sticker on here, um, collaborations with Fetty Wap and Wyclef Jean and Walk the Moon, whom I'm a big fan of, Walk the Moon. And so I got to take a look at the track listing on the back. And uh, it also features Magic Man, which is uh, another a, a group that I've really become uh, fond of lately. I actually picked up their CD um, without knowing who they were. I found it up at Music Millennium earlier this year. So this is kind of a, you know, this fits in with the, you know, finding CDs sound unheard, you know, not knowing about them beforehand and picking it up and taking, it, taking a chance on them. So uh, did that with Magic Man and a CD that Magic Man is featured on. So continuing that thread, you know. And then a couple of miscellaneous things. Uh, New Shoes was a band from the 80s and uh, there's a, a really big hit of theirs called I Can't Wait. It's been featured in commercials over the years and it's really catchy. Uh, yeah, um, look for New Shoes I Can't Wait online and listen to it. Uh, you've probably heard it before. But yeah, this is the album that that was from. And then this is one that uh, is going to be a minor spoiler for my upcoming bargain bag feature. Uh, the Real McCoy, or I, I guess it's just called Real McCoy. There's no the in front of it. Uh, but in my last bargain bag, I had their second album, and I liked it so much, spoiler alert, that I decided to look for their first one. And I actually looked in the bargain wall, This I found this in the bargain wall, looked for it two or three times uh, on previous visits, and I couldn't see it. So I was figuring, okay, it's not there. But I found it yesterday when I was there. So almost missed it. So that alone, in my opinion, was worth the stop, the entire stop. And then what else do we have? Oh, um, I've been wanting to listen to Jamiroquai for a while, and this is their greatest hits album. I picked that up. And then a duets album by Reba McIntyre. And it's got... Uh, Oh, it's got uh, Don Henley, Justin Timberlake, and it's got Kenny Chesney. Carol King is another one on here that uh, I really like, so that was worth it. Uh, Got to hear those duets. And then uh, Glenn Fry, he did a standards album back in 2012. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, always always up from some Glenn Fry, and this is actually the deluxe edition. So uh, as was the case with the uh, the Michael Franti, unless I was able to find the deluxe edition of that. So yeah, those are some of the finds, and I will probably have more finds to show you, because I, I intend to go to Skips uh, as many opportunities like as I can get uh, while they're going out of business sale lasts. I can't wait to see what obscure 
crappy goodies, uh, you know, crappy to other people might be treasure to me uh, during the last days of their sale when their discount is, what, 50% or higher. So, so anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to have to wrap things up here because I'm starting to lose my voice here. Sorry about that. But anyway, thank you for indulging me in this video, uh, this ode to skips or requiem for skips, I guess. Um, I, I just had to pour my thoughts out for skips, my memories of skips. I, I couldn't do that. Uh, I couldn't let skips closure go by without me doing that. Uh, thank you again, Skip. Um, I'm so glad I got that interview in when I could, because um, little did I know, well, little, little did he know that uh, he was going to be closing up just a few short months later. Oh, and speaking of the interview, uh, I thought I would tack on at the end here a couple of little clips during my interview footage with Skip uh, that uh, you didn't see any of in those posts. So uh, just a couple of little Easter eggs that I thought I could I'd just throw in as little last bits of, of Skip. So. Uh, I'll listen, watch and listen to those and enjoy. Um, we had a lot of great customers. Um, there's a couple customers that I know that, this is scary to say, but I'm in their will to get their collection after they pass away. Oh, that, that's kind of frightening. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like, really? I, 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 I don't know you and you're not getting my collection. <laughs> my kids are getting it, you know. Um, one gentleman in particular that he has instructed his wife that if he goes before her that only Skip can look through his stuff <laughs> and Skip will be honest with you and tell you you know what things are worth and and give you a good price if you want to get rid of them and so on and so All right, you so saw my you saw my puppy when we first got him oh, the new one darn thing yeah so you named them all after uh, musicians well Henry was named, our daughter named Henry. Uh, Miles, of course, is named after Miles Davis. And I wanted to name um, Dexter Mingus. Oh. But my wife said, no, you're not naming the dog Mingus. <laughs> and I said, no, it's such a cool name. I said, then we'll have a Mingus and a Miles. And she said, no, she said, we're naming it Dexter. So I made it clear that it's named after Dexter Gordon. It's not named after the serial killer, Dexter. So even though he has tendencies to be a serial killer, Dexter does. Well, I hope you enjoyed those last little bits of my interview with Skip. And uh, also before I go, one last thing. Uh, try and do what you can to support your local independent record store uh, or wherever your nearest record store is. Um, it would mean a lot to them and honestly it would mean a lot to me. I mean, I think record stores are an important part of our culture. They're an important part of music. Uh, you know, music wouldn't be where it is now without the history, the rich history of record stores. So, and it's so much more a different experience than shopping on Amazon or online or in a big box store like Barnes & Noble for your CDs. Uh, you can find stuff in an independent record store that you will not find anywhere else, even online. And just the experience of, you know, flipping through the records or the CDs, you, you'll see stuff that you didn't know existed. And, you know, who knows, if you feel the whim, you might pick it up, t buy it, take it home and try it out and discover a new favorite artist. And that's happened to me several times over the years. Uh, so, you know, take that as first-hand experience from me. So, yes, it's important to support your local independent record store. And that will be the end of my preaching on that subject. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate the feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find the link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they very much deserve your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.